We're back for another episode of ATV's best sports show, UA Overtime. I'm your host, Dylan Buckley. I'm here with Meg on my right, John, the rookie, all the way on the left. And then right next to me, Steve, just like Gronk, making a season debut this week. Welcome back, bro. We missed you. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Today's show, we're going to be talking melodrama with the Knicks, the, our uh, potential World Series matchups, and we're going to talk NFL and college football. Let's jump right into the first quarter. We're going to talk about Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks. Earlier this week, he said he's definitely going to opt out and become a free agent this, this coming after this season coming up. Um, he said he wants to experience what it's like to be a free agent. We can all, I, I, I understand that, it's not a big deal, but do you think he will be a Nick after next season? John, I, what are you making all this? I do. I really don't see any way he can leave. Uh, the media and everyone else really is making a big deal out of how he's saying he's opting out. That's not a big deal at all. That's been basically assumed by everyone throughout the entire time he signed the contract. The only reason it's news is because nobody actually says it. But with Melo, I'm not worried about him leaving. With the Knicks, if he stays, he can sign for a maximum of five years, $129 million. If he leaves, he can make a top, uh, tops of four years, $95 million. That's a lot of money for Melo to leave on the table. But what I'm considering over this whole thing is, and Knicks fans are going to kill me for this, but possibly, maybe, maybe start to think about letting him walk. If he demands nothing less than that max. Because you've got to think of how much of the cap he's really going to take up. And the, and the way, he, the style of ball he plays, so they really need a secondary piece on the offense with him. And if he's taking up the whole cap, there's no way they can do it. So it, unless he takes less money, you want him to walk? You want him to I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I'm not saying get Melo off my team. But if the, if the Knicks are planning to build a championship within the next five years and Melo signs a five-year deal and Melo's taken up 55% of the cap through that time, I, it's really tough for me to see them constructing a team built to win a championship okay. if Melo's taken up. Meg, what do you yeah, think Yeah, I'm going to... Basically, go off that secondary piece that Melo doesn't have next to him. He may stay at, stay in the Knicks, stay in the Garden, but he's only going to stay if he gets the amount of money that he wants. He's really based off his money and make sure he gets that. We saw how he stayed with the Knicks, you know, maintaining the amount of salary that he has now. But um, if they want him to stay, they have to bring someone in so they can base the franchise around him. Financially, though, that's tough because they it's they are tough. stuck still with Amari and Tyson Chandler's contract. Like they don't have the money to bring in a second right, piece. Right. Steve, what are you what are you making all this? Right? Uh, I'm not surprised that Carmelo Anthony is <laughs> is is. is uh, this, to me, this is all this is all about money. He's saying he's going to opt out to drive up his value. He knows the next off season LeBron is a free agent. He's going to draw a ton of. Uh, a ton of attention, obviously. He's saying, look at me, I'm going to be on the market too. He's telling the Knicks, pony up or I'm out of here. But he's not going anywhere. He likes playing in New York. I think that team is built around him. I think, I think the Knicks need him too. I, don't, I, I, don't, I like some of the younger pieces that they have. I love Amon Shumpert as much Absolutely. as I dislike the I don't the think Knicks. James yeah. Dolan does. I, I, I love Amon Shumpert. I, 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 I like some of the moves they made in the offseason. I actually like them getting Ron Artest. I think this is a team that really could compete in the East. I just, I just think, like, like we've, we've all been, mm -hmm. we, you guys have been talking about, they need somebody else. They need but that can other someone piece. step up? They have great players there that have that are come back from injuries that could step up. It's all up about being consistent. I think, I think it's, I think it's about, I think end. it's about, you know, being tough. I think they have the offense. Mm -hmm. What, what I, what I always thought was the concern with them is I don't think they're tough enough. And you watched them in the Pacers last year. They Absolutely. got bullied right. in that Tyson series. Chandler they got bullied in that series. Right he was muscled by a much better, center, yep. much better complete center. In the immediate, I think they're okay with Melo this year and building that team with the pieces they have. They're, they have very nice pieces this very year. But in the long term, if Melo signs this deal, they're going to need a point guard and they're going to need a center because Stoudemire and Chandler come off the books unless they want to bring back Chandler, which is an option. But in 2015, there, there are going to be point guards on the market. Just to name a few names, there's Rondo, there's Jeremy Lin, there's Ricky Rubio. They're going to have options Rondo, to go that baby. way. Bring them to the ground. Bring back Lin. At center, there's going to be Brooke Lopez, Marcus Gasol, DeAndre Jordan, Roy Hibbert. There's going to be the names out there that Absolutely. are going to demand close to max money. And if Melo is making max money, there's, an, there's not a very good chance they're going to bring in a guy I think what it comes down to, the whole point of this is Melo just wants to be courted. He wants he to be yes. exactly. And can you blame him? ATV shows come to me all the time. They want me to switch ah, shows. Yeah, they yeah, recruit yeah, yeah. me, take me out to dinner. Do I take the free yeah. stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I would never leave UA over time. <laughs> and that's girl. the whole point of all of this. Yeah. Melo's not going anywhere. He's going to stay with the Knicks. He's not going to turn down. He's not going to leave $30 million on the table. You got his wife, Lala Anthony. That's the only worry. Is she's she thinks she's famous and she really wants to be famous. So she might want to move to LA, maybe try and talk him to join the Lakers. But 
That's not going to happen. He's not going to leave the money. He's not going to go to the Lakers. He's going to come back to the Knicks because when it comes down to it, money talks. He's never taken less money. Exactly. Melo wants He waited. He did. He Melo. They're never going to win a title with this guy. He pushed that trade to the Knicks because he could have made, it was a matter of a couple million dollars more. If he, if he got traded to New York City, Denver rather than small. rather than sign with them in the off season, he demanded okay, that so trade. Okay, so starting next season, what teams mellow on, John? I don't see him leaving. Mm -hmm. New York Knicks. Meg? Women have a lot of say in their men, and <laughs> he's gonna go to LA. He's going. Wow. wow! We got a prediction. Wow! I don't agree with that. That's actually <laughs> that she makes a very fair point. All right. Well, I don't agree with that. And if Melo does leave, I'm not conceding, but that's a good point. <laughs> <I know. laughs> if Melo does leave, let him go. There's another superstar who'll come to the Garden. <laughs> LeBron. Come on, bring the king to the guard. We don't if need If he's Mello. going anywhere, he's going to Cleveland. No, he's not. If he's going anywhere, no, he's going he's to Cleveland. Nah, he's coming to the guard. He's going if back Mello to leaves, Cleveland. LeBron's coming to the guard. That's going to yeah. do it for the first quarter, though. We're done talking about the Knicks. Coming up, we're going to talk about we picked our World Series picks last week. We're going to see how those picks are doing. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We're in the second quarter now. We're going to talk about our World Series picks from last week. Steve wasn't here, but... He still has his picks. He's going to talk about it. Uh, last night, the Red Sox were able to win 4-3 to three in Game 5. Huge win. They won two out of three games in Detroit. Now they're going back to Boston for the final two games, and it's looking good that, that the Red Sox are going to get back to the World Series for them. Meanwhile, in the National League, the Dodgers won. They stayed, stayed alive Wednesday night, but they're still down 3-2 and going back to St. Louis. We don't know how that's going to go. We're going to jump right into the ALCS first, though. Steve, what do you think is going to happen? I like the Red Sox to finish the deal. I think the job John Farrell did is... Unbelievable. I think the AL broke completely different than I. Preseason, I thought the, the Angels were the heavy favorite. Me too. I thought this, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect like these, these smaller, like the A's to have the success that they had. It was a really tight race the whole way. But this is a resilient Red Sox team that they're like the king of comebacks. And David Ortiz is captain clutch again. I think this is a team that's headed to the World Series, no okay. question. Meg, what do you think? On your points, the Red Sox offense is out of control. They're always coming through in the clutch, and you can't disagree with that. But the only way the Detroit Tigers are going to win this is if they keep their pitching in line. Scherzer has a star with 1.29 ERA, and you also have their offense. And if Detroit can get their offense back in these games, they're going to do very well, and I think Detroit still has the advantage. With Scherzer and Verlander going in the next two games, Detroit's it's, it's hard to count them out. I just like the resiliency of this Red Sox. Absolutely, John, what do you got? Absolutely, yeah. I just want to say, I don't think there's any group of guys ever that's come together that fits close, fits as perfectly as this Red Sox group does. Mm -hmm. You, see, beards, you see all the beards. You see Poppy picking up Koji Uehara <laughs> and spinning him around after saves. Uh, I, I think it's great. I, I picked last week, my prediction was the Red Sox to win it in six. Uh, on Saturday night, the Red Sox will take on the Tigers at Fenway in Game 6. I think they're going to take it home. It's going to be Buckles versus Scherzer, which is a rematch of Game 2. Uh, Scherzer actually outdueled Buckles in that game. That's, that's the game that the Tigers actually put up a lot of runs. Uh, but the Red Sox came out in the end with Poppy's Grand Slam. Uh, this postseason, Cabrera's only hitting 263, Fielder's only hitting 243, and Cabrera against Buckles is only hitting 238 in his career with no home runs. And Cabrera is kind of injured right now. You saw him. He's hobbling. Yeah. He's definitely hobbled. But at Fenway, with the fans there going crazy in an elimination game, I just really don't see uh, I'm gonna have to Tigers agree in. with John. I also picked the Red Sox to win. I didn't pick in six. I didn't give a number. But I think they ended uh, Saturday in game six. They're at home. Speaking of their, uh, the Tigers' offense, Prince Fielder has been terrible this postseason. Mm -hmm. He hasn't driven in a run his last 65 postseason at-bats. Wow. If they're going to win two games in Boston, Fielder's got to step it up. I know they got Scherzer going, the AL Cy Young favorite. But I think the Red Sox close it out, game six, they go to the World Series. Can I just make a subtle yeah, point about the Red Sox? I think the tone was set very early with this team. And I, I want to take it all the way back to the beginning. The start, remember where the season started with the, like the Boston bombing and everything? Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel like this team has just been like the tightest knit unit. Yeah. In I don't think there's a closer group. They got rid That's, of Bobby Valentine. To your point, to your point from the beginning, I think that just from there, this team, I don't know, they've just seemed like they've, had like this they're, perfect they're chemistry. They're Boston strong. They're yes. bo and, and I think, I don't know if, I think that's kind of like set the tone for this whole year, which is why it's hard for me in a, in a, in a game where they can eliminate the Tigers to think that they're not going to get it. Lot if you're not a Yankee fan, it's hard to root against them. Yeah. Right. As a Yankee fan, I hate to see it, but I, I hate to say it, but I do think the Red Sox are going to go back to the World Series. Now, moving into the National League, the Dodgers are down 3-2. to two. We got game six tonight in St. Louis. Steve, who you got winning that? Preseason, I picked the Dodgers you to did, win the World Series, so you know I'm going to stick with them. They got my boy Clayton Kershaw, who I think is the NL Cy Young. I think this team, if you look at it top to bottom, is the most talented roster in baseball. Um, you know, 
I think I think the Cardinals deserve a ton of credit. I th it to, to in my opinion, the St. Louis Cardinals are the best run organization in Major League Baseball. They're a small market team. They're in it every year. Every they they pick the right managers. They get the right players, and they just get it done. They roll up their sleeves. They get it done. It's hard to pick against the Cardinals, but I have to stay with my preseason pick. I'm keeping with the Dodgers. Okay, Meg. Okay, and last week I also picked the Cardinals to win, so I'm going to go against you, Steve. But um, last year, <laughs> the Cards um, lost yeah. to the Giants 3-1. They lost three games in a row, yep. and that creates a kind of a sour taste in my tongue. I don't know if that's going to happen two years in a row. Um, so I think the cards are going to really rise up and say, look, let's overcome what we couldn't do last season. Okay. That's a great point you make because Fox ran a stat on their broadcast last night that no team in the history of baseball, hockey, or basketball has ever blown a 3-1 series lead two years in a row. Ever. Wow. Wow. So that's I like that. Thank Fox for Thank that you. one. Thank you. Wow. you got winning, John. I, I had the Cardinals in seven from the beginning. I, I still think that it's going to be the Cardinals in seven. I feel that Kershaw is not going to let uh, his team down uh, in game six. He's posted a 0 0.47 ERA in the postseason, which is, it's, you can't beat the guy. Um, I, it's going to be a solid matchup again uh, against Michael Walker, the rookie, who's, who, he's been just about as, he's done everything you can ask for so far. But when it comes down to it in game seven, it's going to be Ryu versus Wainwright, if there is a game seven, of course. And the Cardinals, like you said, I just don't see them blowing this kind of a lead two years ago. I'm going to have to agree again with John on this. I picked the Cardinals last week. I, think they're gonna, I don't think they're going to finish off in six. I think Waka, who's been phenomenal, I think he finally hits a bump in the road. He's a rookie. He's got, he's, there's no way he's going to be this great in his first postseason. And plus, Kershaw is the best overall pitcher in baseball. I think the Dodgers stay alive in six, but that's where it ends for Don Mattingly and the Dodgers. They lose in seven. Wainwright lost game three, but he's, in his career, he's been lights out. He's money in the playoffs. I think they win seven, and the Cardinals make it back to their 19th World Series, the face-off against the Red Sox. My picks from last week, still intact. I'm looking good. That's going to do, this, gonna do for the second quarter, though. We're going into halftime. Coming up in the third quarter, we're going to talk about Eli Manning and how many more picks he's going to throw this week. Stay tuned. We're back. We're in the third quarter now. We're going to talk New York football. Talk about the Jets and the Giants, not the Bills, because let's be honest, no one really cares. Um, first, we're going to talk about the best team in New York right now. I'd say it as a Pats fan, but it is the Jets, because the Giants have been god awful this season. The Jets are playing their tough rival, the New England Patriots, this week. The Pats are coming off that big win against the Saints last week, and in week two, when they played, the Jets lost 13 to 10. So, John, who you got winning between the Jets and the Pats? I'm going to take the Pats, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Kind of, uh, kind of like even if you even you saw in week two, the game was. Fairly even throughout the whole way, even though it wasn't the best game. The Jets always managed to get up for this game, even though the last time the last time they beat the Jet, uh, Patriots in general was in the playoffs. I think it was three seasons ago. 2011 was right. Last time they beat them in the regular season though was September 19, 2010. It's, oh, wow. it's been I think it's a six, a six game losing streak. But just the way the the last the last time they played in week two, they ran the ball well. Uh, Bilal Powell had a decent game. Even Chris Ivory, I think, he had his best game of the year. And the Patriots are giving up 119 rushing yards a game. So it's making up to be a competitive game. But with Gronkowski back, it looks like the Patriots are going to have that extra weapon that they needed Huge. to pull away in week two. So I'm going to take the pass. Meg, how are you? I completely agree with all your points. Um, Gronkowski is going to bring a different impact to that game, Absolutely. especially because there's so much hype about him. Um, the Jets, their defense is solid. If they can get to Tom Brady, this game's going to be close. But I do see the Pats coming over maybe with a field goal. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a rivalry game, AFC East divisional game, so it's closer. But I also think this Patriots team is starting to hit its stride. I think last week you saw they, came, they had a big comeback victory against a very good New Orleans Saints team at home. You know, it, the you know, Jets-Patriots, you can always kind of throw out the record books a little bit. I mean, the Patriots have dominated the series, but the Jets will always play close. I like this, you know, I really, I'm, I'm not a Jets fan at all, but I'm, I'm impressed with the way that they've, they've kind of shown this resolve. I mean, I know the Falcons aren't the Falcons, but having a comeback victory on Monday night like that, the Jets will keep it close, but the Patriots are a better team. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady's developing the poor with, you know, Tompkins and the other Dobson. And I think this is a Patriots team that they're going to... I just want to point out how we're talking about the Patriots as, a, as if they're in some kind of odd, bad they're five, football right? They're 5-1. And, and this, this is the worst we've seen them play. This is yeah. the worst we've seen them play. I mean, it's sli Tom Brady, is as good as he's been, this isn't Tom Brady of Tom Brady. I think the games have been sloppy, and that's why we're kind yeah. of... You but he's breaking yeah, in totally exactly. new receivers. Yeah. All of yeah. And this is hard for me to, as a Giants fan to say this, yeah, but Tom Brady... He's going to go down as one of the best quarterbacks to ever play. The best ever. 
biased completely because I'm a Pats fan. But speaking of the game, Super Bowl 42 and 46. All right, let's, all right, let's go there. 0 oh and 6. Let's talk about that. We're gonna talk. I about can't that, wait actually. to talk about that. I think I'm gonna great lead in. <laughs> I'm not, we're not there yet. We're gonna do, I'm gonna get a clean sweep. I'm gonna say the Pats win. I think it's gonna be a really close game. The Jets always play the Pats close. Rex Ryan knows how to coach a good defense against Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. The Jets, they're banged up. Their secondary is banged up. So is the Patriots' defense. But the Pats' defense looked very strong last week. Akeem Tlaib might not play. Will Fork's out for the year. Mayo's now out for the year. But they're still going to be able to shut down Geno Smith, who's a rookie. He's going to struggle. He threw three picks and was sacked four times in that Week 2 matchup. And like you said, Brady's hitting his stride with these young wide receivers. And now with Gronk, I, we know how much Gronk's going to play. But even with Gronk on the field a little bit, it's going to completely change the offense. I think they're gonna, And we saw Ridley last week came back had a big impact. I think the Jets win a close – I mean, the, sorry, the Pats win a close game. But, like we said, speaking of those 0-6 Giants, they play Monday night in Minnesota, uh, no, in MetLife against the Vikings, the 1-4 Vikings. Are the Giants finally going to get a win? They are 0-6. John, oh, what do you got? This is the week. Steve, we'll get to you. We'll this get is you. the week they do it. They, it's gonna got gonna all the makings of it. It's got all the makings. Uh, they're playing the Vikings team. They're playing a Vikings team who has a brand-new quarterback who learned the playbook less than two weeks ago. Um, the Vikings, they really haven't done much to show you much of anything this year at all. They've gone through, has it been three quarterbacks between Ponder, now Freeman? Matt Castle started. And Castle, yeah, so it's been three. Yeah. Uh, with the Giants, we all know how much they've struggled this year. They, they averaged four turnovers a game, 68 rushing yards. They only sacked the quarterback once a game. Um, Eli and his picks. But <laughs> Eli and his picks, that's all you're going to say? I'm, I'm not even going to go into Love it. it. Uh, but it's a low <laughs> number. <laughs> it's a nice round. Oh, it's hey, you can't ask got Peyton going for the touchdown record, Eli going for the interception record. Hey. Is that what's happening? But last, w- last week we saw a bit of a turning point for the Giants uh, with their offensive line. They were actually tr- trying to block the other team, and it, and it worked yeah, out well. Trying to block. They were support. trying, <laughs> and it turned out to 125 Brandon Jacobs rushing yards, which uh, still I, lost I, st- I still don't there. know what to make of that. Yeah, but it was, of course, progress. Mm-hmm. I think what we saw in the Giants last week was more of what to expect from the team this year. They're not very good. They might not even be good, but they're definitely not 0-6. We're at caliber All right, team. Meg, what do you think? All right, well, I agree with you, but we have to talk about why they're going to win this week. I agree they're going to snap that record, but why they're going to win is because the offensive line has to get to the quarterback. They only have five sacks on the year. In 2004 to 2012, the Giants had 367 sacks. I mean, yes, yeah. that's over the course of... You that know, was their still. identity. How many yeah, years? They, they but still, the they need to. That's where they're gonna find how they're gonna win. Is they have to get to the quarterback. All right. That's what their entire. Let's, game let's hear from Steve. On. What do you got, man? New York Giants. I'll tell you how bad it's been as a fan this year, and this is why you have to win. I'm not gonna say you're going to because I'm beyond that point. Okay. <laughs> Last Thursday night, I told my girlfriend I would rather watch Crazy Stupid Love than watch the Giants. And it almost happened. Wait, is that the Steve It's Carroll? a movie with Ryan Gosling. That's a solid film. Good movie. <laughs> I would rather watch. You can ask Kelsey. She will confirm this. I said, I cannot watch it. But as we were about to put on the movie, I said, let's put on NFL.com. She throws it on NFL.com. We watch the rest of the game. And I'm thinking fourth quarter, Eli's got the ball. They're making the comeback. They're moving the ball down the field. Jacobs is running well. Eli throws another interception. Eli throws another oh. interception. And my heart was broken. I had to watch the movie to... He gives you hope, build, and he just to build back up my heart, That's Giants. Right please, if you do not win this week, when <laughs> the, you are playing a one and four team at home who's just as dysfunctional as yep. you, get it done. I don't care how you win three nothing, two nothing, two one. I don't care. Win the game. Listen, I please. love bashing the Giants. I'm loving this as a Pats fan. <sighs> they ruined my life pretty much. But I hate to say it, I think the Giants do get to win this Monday. Minnesota's got the 29th ranked pass defense. I think Eli, ranked, yep. Eli has a, a bounce back week. I think he still throws some picks, but the Vikings are just hey, as bad a as the bounce Giants. back week would be, be two picks. Would be One or two, two picks. picks and two touchdowns. There you go. And we'll Adrian, go with I mean, Adrian Peterson will have an impact on the game, but mm. not as heavily as. And so I, I think the Giants do get the first win. And I know one thing's for sure: no matter what, win or lose, we're gonna get a couple shots of Eli on the sideline, making his Eli face, staring off into space, doing nothing. This show should be sponsored by ManningFaces.com. Look it up if you don't know what that is. It's a great website. But no matter what. We'll see what the Giants get. Is the Giants get it done. See if the Jets can somehow beat the Pats. We'll, see, we'll, we'll talk about that next week with the results. That's going to do it for the third quarter. Coming up in the fourth quarter, we're going to pick our game of the week for the NFL. Los Soprano. We're in the fourth quarter now. We're going to. Last week we picked our game of the week. We all agreed it was going to be the Pats versus the Saints. That was the best game of last week. We're going to try that again. We got a bunch of good games coming up this week. We got Dallas at, uh, Dallas versus the Eagles. Jets pass like we talked about earlier. Um, 
Steelers Ravens, that's a hard rival. They always have good games. And then Peyton Manning has returned back to Indianapolis against the Colts. Which game do you got being the game of the week, Steve? I'm going with that one right there. I'm going with uh, Peyton's big return to Indianapolis. I've been waiting for the, you know, Jim Mercer taking those little shots. Is, there's a lot of subplots in this game, but I, I'm, I'm excited to see. I hope Peyton gets a huge ovation. He, he deserves He's it to that it. city. Absolutely. That's a He's football gone. city that he transformed into. It's in great shape with Andrew Luck. I can't wait to see those, the two probably most cerebral quarterbacks in the NFL face off. Real quick, who do you got winning? I'm going to take the Indianapolis Colts oh, wow. on Sunday night to deliver the, first loss, to the, the first loss to the Broncos. All right, Meg, what's your game? Okay, so my pick is Eagles-Cowboys. This game has me torn because you have Nick Foles, who could take the quarterback role over Michael Vick. He's done decently well in the last game. But then you have the Cowboys, and you have Tony Romo, who is an outstanding quarterback, to say the least. But right now, I'm really shifting towards the Cowboys. I just think they're going to have an extra energy. All right, John, what's It's tough game? to argue that. It's tough to argue against uh, Denver and Indy, of course. But I'm taking Baltimore-Pittsburgh. Uh, the rivalry is always tight. The defense is always stingy, even though Pittsburgh has definitely had their struggles this year. Baltimore, I think they might be fourth or fifth against the run this year. Uh, it's going to be a tough battle. I'm going to probably take the Ravens, though. It's a heated defensive rivalry every game. I'm going to have to agree with time. Steve. I'm going to go with Peyton Manning to turn to Indy. Jim Irsay has been talking all week. Peyton Manning's going to come in there looking to prove everyone wrong that, that said his career was done and showed that they should have chose him over Andrew Luck in the short term, that is. The Broncos, I think the Broncos continue to roll. Peyton Manning goes undefeated. He's still undefeated uh, after Sunday night, and the Broncos get the win. That's going to wrap it up for the fourth quarter coming up in overtime. We're going to talk our midseason Heisman favorites right now, and you better believe we're talking Johnny football. Welcome back. We're in overtime right now. We're talking college football. It's midseason, right, right in the middle of the season right now. We got a bunch of quarterbacks that are heavy favorites right now for the Heisman. We got Oregon's Marcus Mariota, Mariota, I'm sorry, Johnny Football, Teddy Bridgewater, Taj Boyd, A.J. McCarron. There's, the, the list goes on. There's a bunch of quarterbacks. It's going to be a quarterback-heavy Heisman race. And who do you guys got as your favorite right now? Meg, who's your, who's your leader? Uh, I'm going to go with Clemson's Taj Boyd. Um, although his team is more under the radar, not as high up as Bridgewater or Mariota, but he still has 15 touchdowns, two interceptions, and his Clemson team is 6-0. Next, next week they're going to face Florida State, which is a 5-0 and team, and I still expect Taj Boyd to have an outstanding game and bring him, bring his team to 7-0. John, who you got? Quarterbacks on quarterbacks. You oh, talked quarterback. about him. I got Oregon sophomore quarterback Marcus Mariota. Uh, the, really the guy, he's been as, as close to perfect as you can be. 17 touchdowns, no picks, eight more touchdowns on the ground. <laughs> what else Ag can you say? Against, and the defense he's playing, they're Pac-12 defenses, but they honestly have been surprisingly competitive. Mm -hmm. So, I got to give it to him. I'm going to give it to my boy Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy I Bridgewater. love I I mean, beyond the statistics, I think he is the best quarterback in college football. I think he any team that has a number one pick that needs a quarterback, you better take him. He's tough. He's accurate. He's a great leader. I saw him last year. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about last year. I loved what he did down the stretch with that hurt hand to play in those games and to lead them to the victory over uh, Florida in the Sugar Bowl. It's kind of springboarded into what's been. They're going to go undefeated. They're going to win all their games this year, and this guy is the real deal. Listen, all these picks are very good. It's tough to argue. Any of them, honestly, can win the Heisman. It's a tight race, but I'm going with the boss of college football, Johnny Menzel, Johnny Football. He's going to win his second Heisman. Johnny Heisman, I like to call him. He's, he's having a better year so far this season is than he was. Is he going to sign the Heisman this oh, year? Oh, I hope so. I hope he just yeah. sharpies it. Permanent. Um, he's gonna, I think he's going to get it. He's having a better year than he was last year at this point. And the big win last year, they beat Alabama. But this year against Alabama, their only loss, they lost 49-42. Johnny Football lit it up. He threw 400, I think 64 yards or 84 yards, almost 500 yards, five touchdowns, ran for 98 against one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the country. He's... he's the best offensive player overall in college football. Will he be the best NFL quarterback? Probably not. But he's the best college fo football quarterback, in my opinion. And he's only behind Jadavion Clowney as the best overall player, in my opinion. Oh, oh, you want to jump in? I'm just going to say he's going to be Johnny Bench in the NFL. <laughs> right, that's fine. <laughs> right, Johnny Bench. He's the man right now. He's going to be the Tim he's, Tebow of the NFL. He's living the life, and he's going to get another Heisman, put it on his shelf, crush a beer, Look at everyone and be like, yeah, I'm Johnny Football. What's up? I don't need to go to the Manning camp. Johnny Frat Boy. Johnny Frat Boy. Johnny Frat We're in the boy. Tebow jersey. He's the man. But th this whole argument is kind of pointless because last year, at this point, the argument was like Colin Klein and Geno Smith and Manta Teo. And this is before Johnny Football was <laughs> yeah. Let's not get into Manta <laughs> But 
Like, we still have to, have to see which quarterback has the great second half, which team doesn't lose. We're going to see who's number one. AJ McCarron's going to be in it. All these quarterbacks are going to be in it. It's, it's wide open. It's important it's to note open. that a lot, a lot can it's change in this time. A lot's going to change. It's wide open, too. Yeah, definitely. If one of these undefeated teams loses that, the quarterback's chance is done Blood automatically. Open. Well, that's going to do it for overtime, but we're not done yet. We're going to jump right into final thoughts. Meg, what do you got? I'm going to go Derrick Rose. I've been waiting to see how he's going to come back, and he's saying that he's increased his vertical by five inches. He feels so much more explosive, and I'm ready to watch him play. Absolutely. John? Uh, as we might know, ESPN.com has unveiled over the last month or so their NBA rank where they rank every single player in the NBA. <laughs> and this past week, they've ranked Kobe Bryant as 25th. Ugh. And there was a big stink about it on Twitter, and all the Laker fans are upset, and all the Kobe fans are upset. But they shouldn't be upset because the guy has a torn Achilles and nobody from a torn Achilles has ever come back from a torn Achilles to be as good as they were. Now, I'm not saying Kobe Bryant is not going to be the same. I still co I know Kobe Bryant is a top 10, top 7 or 6 player in the NBA and nobody's challenging his toughness. But Kobe Bryant being ranked 25th is fair because nobody knows what's going to happen with his foot. Absolutely. Steve, what do you got? Fair point. Um, I'd just like to send a birthday shout out to my father this weekend. Um, it's actually uh, the 21st, so I believe that's Monday. But this weekend is very special. It's Notre Dame USC. We're big Notre Dame fans. Hopefully, we take care of USC. Love you, Dad. Wear your uh, Joe Montana jersey this weekend. <laughs> All right. For me, I'm going to keep it in you. Albany tomorrow is the homecoming game. I don't really care that much about the game. The team's struggling this year. They're 1 and 6. We got a new stadium. It's fun. I'm going to be there. Come out and tailgate tomorrow. Drink some beers if you're, if you're legal, of course. You know, listen to some good music, throw the football around, can jam, have a good time. I went to the opening, the home opener. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to be there. I'll be there. I'll sign autographs. You know, I'll take pictures. <laughs> oh I'll kiss some babies if you want. I don't care. I was going to go. Now I'm going <laughs> to go. Now you're going to go? <laughs> you don't want an autograph? I'll give you one right after this. All right, all right, all right. All right, look for me. I'll be, the, I'll be in the group blasting Highway to the Danger Zone on loop all day. That's gonna, but that's going to wrap it up for nice. us tonight, today. <laughs> nice. We'll see you next weekend. I'll see you tomorrow.